we will start the topic of probability, probability, probability Now, this topic we have been doing since so many classes, you must have done in class 9th, you did it in class 10th, we did it in class 11th, now we are again doing it in class 12th. Okay. Till now the kind of probability that we dealt with was called the straightforward kind of direct probabilities. Okay. You have got so many blacks, so many blue, so many green balls in a bag, you put your hand in, try to draw it out how many, what is the probability that you get a green or a blue or a black. Okay. Um, not as simple as this, it could become complicated also if you have maybe, uh, maybe some coin in it or what is the way in which you can put coins into boxes or draw coins, coins from boxes. Okay. These are called direct probabilities and they are normally easy to deal, once you understand the two things, because probability has got a very, very strong backing of what? Permutations and combinations. Hmm? Okay. That means, you should be able to count what is the number of ways. Okay. So, but the probability that we will be doing here is the probability which is called conditional probability. Okay. It is also called a reverse probability. Okay. So, what happens? Now, you will be asked this that you have got three bags, maybe two bags, uh, in one there are five red and seven black, in another there is three red and two black and you close your eyes. That means, you do not know which bag you are drawing from and you just draw a ball, open your eyes and see that it is red. Now, what is the probability that it came from bag one, you understand? that becomes the subject matter of conditional probability. That means, some event has already occurred, okay. some event has already occurred and you want what is the probability that it came from something else. Okay. That is what we will be dealing in this chapter and had it not been for, for a Bayes, Bayes theorem, it actually sounds chaotic. Okay, even the sound of the problem is chaotic, when we do the conditional probability. Now, I will like to explain this with an example. Okay. So, so let, let three coins be tossed. Okay. So, let three coins be tossed. Then, can you write the sample space? Write it. So, I will say we are we are dealing with we are dealing with the conditional probability, okay. conditional probability. Okay. Now, if I toss three coins, let three coins be tossed, let three coins be tossed, okay. Let three coins be tossed. Let us say one after another. Okay. So, what is the sample space? The sample space, you understand what sample space is? It is actually the universal set, okay, the set that will contain all the events. So, the sample space will be, it is denoted by, sets are denoted by capital letters. right? So, S as what? 
However, done it. I I I've been shifting the T's first. Okay, I've got one tail. H represents the head. T represents the tail. So that. What next? So all the ways in which I could get two heads are exhausted. Now I get one head, and let us say one head again comes here. And the second head comes. Here and the third head is here, and then all. Okay. What if I asked you? Uh, if what if I had asked you to uh, toss four coins? How would you have written the sample space? How would you have written the sample? Uh, how how do you know? First of all, there are sixteen because it is four events. to complete the whole i it is composed of four sub events and each can be done in two ways so it is 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 right this is called the product rule if there is if there is a uh, if there is a task which can be broken down into four sub tasks okay and if the first can be done in m ways and the next can be done in n ways and the next can be done in p ways all independent of each other then the task can be completed in m into n into p ways this is due to the tree diagram that comes into play okay we understand this is due to the tree diagram so so how do you write there is a mechanism you know um any one of you having computers as their subject they would have come to know what you do you write h t h t h t h t it alternate them then you write h h t t h h t t you alternate them after 2 then you alternate them after 4 h h h h t t T T. This is how you'll get the sample space. If if there are four coins, you know sixteen. So what do you what do you do? You have done till here. So H T H T H T H T. Okay, and then you extend this H H T T H H T T. This four H four T. Now another four H. And another four T, and then eight H, and then eight T. So whatever be the number of coins, you'll not have that trouble doing that. Okay, so so if I maybe maybe cover this up, if I cover this up, that means this is. this is for the three coins right this whole is for three coins this is for four how about two how about two coins two coins is this yeah the the this one this for two the green one is for two red one is for Three, the bigger one is for four, and it can go up, but no one is going to maybe ask you. But even if that is there, this works fine. But only if the ways are two, okay? If only there are two events, that means head or tail or whatever, pass and fail or whatever, fine. So, so this is how we have written it. now what now i define an event okay i define an event e okay an event e which says 
getting at least two heads okay getting at least two heads at least two heads appear okay sorry so e is the event e is the event that at least two heads appear so can we write the can we write the set at least two means two or more so we have two heads as these two heads two heads two heads so h h t h t h t h h i was just talking about the two heads first okay that's what so i started with two heads now i go to three heads so it is h h h happy <laughs> okay so two heads and three heads both both will be included at the most means two and less now now i define f that the that the first first show is tail that the first tail shows first or that the tail shows that the first first throw shows tail okay shows tail what is that what is that so f becomes starts from here right so t h h t t h t h t t t t so far so good now can you find what is e intersection f what is the intersection this matches with this this does not this does not does not so it is t h h e intersection f is only one event okay now if someone asks me what is the probability of e happening such that f has already occurred okay so so someone asks me what is the probability of e happening such that f has already occurred or given that such that or given that okay so given that look we denote it by probability of e in sets we had used the vertical line as as such that or colon or vertical line is normally used as such that so so it is written as this this probability that i am talking about probability how will you read read it probability of e such that f obviously has always occurred is there but in your mind you will always say p e such that f that means such that f has happened and you want the way in which p can happen okay now you see what what happens the moment f has happened listen to me first before writing 
द मोमेंट एफ हैज हैपन्ड ओके द मोमेंट एफ हैज हैपन्ड immediately your sample space shrinks to f from f it shrinks to from s from eight of them it shrinks to four of them okay because what are they asking you f has already occurred now if it has occurred what is the probability next that e will also occur so what happens my suddenly e can happen only from f well f has already occurred do you get this point hm no everyone so suddenly my sample space shrinks to this and i'll try to see whether i have some event that is included in f and it belongs to e okay that means it should belong to e as well as f that means it should belong to e intersection f okay so what is the probability what should i be writing the probability as any one of these four can occur no any one of these four can occur so it will become 1 upon 4 no it becomes 1 upon 4 simple but writing uh, it was it was such a small sample that we were able to write f we were able to write e ultimately what happens many a times you will simply not be having a clue about what is happening you will just be counting it like that okay you just be counting it in those cases what do we do in those cases what do we do we have to develop a formula a quantitative method of assessing it instead of writing the whole set then trying to figure out Say suppose there were twenty such events in E that would have favored, that would have been in F as well. Then writing it and picking the common ones would have been a big bother. Hmm. So ultimately, we come to the conclusion that that probability of E such that F has occurred will be number of events, the number of elements that belong to E intersection F. upon n f number of elements in f why so because my n f becomes the new sample space it becomes a modified sample space okay where n n always denotes number of elements when you say n f it means number of elements in set f n e intersection f number of elements in E intersection F, and that becomes what? See, I'll, I'll cross check. This we did common sensically. This, it is one upon four, provided obviously that all of these events are equally likely. Okay, in flipping a coin, obviously getting a head or a tail is equally likely, and and their probability is half. Hmm? So obviously you should be able to also write what? What is the probability of this happening? One by eight. Why do you say so? There are eight possible outcomes, and it is one of them. There is another way of doing that. You get a head. Hmm? The product rule. You get a head. Probability is half. Ah, uh, the probability is half. You get another head. Probability is half. You get another head. Probability is half. So it is one by eight. Head. and head and head is half into half and which is intersection i do not know if it was emphasized in class 11 and which is an intersection is actually translate it actually translates into multiplication 